thank you so much for the kind words i generally f- some of this stuff i myself forget sometimes and when i hear them i'm like oh wow people still know that i want some of these things but i'm told um when i came here that i'm here to inspire and and i have to talk to some really smart college students i felt a little concerned because uh one i'm not good at inspiring and second you guys are really smart so i think that that did the trick for me to sort of almost feel like when i'm going to walk up to the dais are people going to feel that this guy is going to speak about something very very inspiring now reality is i'm not here to inspire i can tell you something which is my real story you might get inspired you might not get inspired but inspiration is a small period of time right you get inspired in this room you walk out that goes away i want to make sure that whatever you hear today you keep it along with yourself it inspires you or not really doesn't matter but you're at least able to hear a story which probably can help you sometime ahead in your life so to begin with thank you so much for having me here mr chadda i uh, this place feels like a deja vu for me because uh, i was i was in a similar function a couple of years back i'll come to it when i come to it but uh, thank you so much for having me here to begin with i spent my childhood in the southern half of orissa very very small town so you know, what i'm going to do today is uh, i'm going to break my story into a couple of parts with with my learnings around this and maybe uh, you'd be able to sort of uh, make sense around it the first thing was because i spent my childhood in a really really small town which i'm sure a lot of you would have spent your uh, childhood in it was tough it was tough because a lot of people would tell you every time that you want to do something big and new it was it was a generation when google and yahoo were just starting off used to have those 3 dollar connections where even google would show loading on the screen it used to be really tough around that time to sort of say i want to become an entrepreneur but i felt it was really exciting i still remember seeing stories of how google was being built eric schimm being recruited and so on i was very young i was in second grade probably at that point of time so it was it was it was exciting for me i still remember when i was a young kid and people would ask what do you want to become people would say i want to become an engineer a doctor and i would say an entrepreneur and people would be like do you know how to spell that and i'm like okay i'm i'm still learning so during that period i did not have a lot of friends and i aspired to do something that was completely different and it was absurd for a lot of people around myself but what i deeply understood within myself is saying if i you know there's something which is pretty famous a lot of people say dare to dream i don't think that's right i think dare to have the courage of going out and making your dreams into reality so i basically felt i'll do it and if i fall flat that's fine i'll go, i can always go back to school and and educate myself so post 10th grade i came to the northern half of india which is this place and said you know i'll i'll discover myself if i'm able to learn and build myself towards that it's great if not i'd have learned from my failures now around that same period I got the opportunity to come to this college. This was a couple of years back. Now, interestingly, I dropped out after a couple of months, making this my own Stanford. But the reality is, I think uh, the kind of learnings I had back here were among the most important ones as I built myself into becoming an entrepreneur. In the couple of months that I spent here, there were a few things that I learned which were unbelievable. I think one of the things was. as i chose this university i had a couple of options i had an option of going to california in one of the ivy leagues i had options of going to uk because i had applied there and i had an option of being back here in india and i remember gitika gitika was probably the individual if i'm not wrong whom i was speaking to very early and she inspired a lot of confidence in me in terms of saying hey you know what not only will you be able to sort of solve a problem and create reasoning you'd be able to have education process support from faculty who's seen and built businesses in the past without the curbs of what other formal education would come with and i felt that was exciting so i chose to come over to this college and it was nothing very different for a couple of months i used to spend a lot of time with our economics professor and i think some of the macro micro economics all the way to balance sheets are the ones that i present to our board nowadays and it's and it sounds so funny but that is how it was During this period, there was one more thing that I learned. A lot of people don't know the story about how and why I dropped out. I never planned to drop out. I was enjoying my curriculum here. It was it was it was an absolute pleasure to be back here. 
But the reason why I did was actually I was taking leaves. So I said that tomorrow I'm going to take a leave because there are these few important meetings and I want to build this company. And I kept pushing that tomorrow over and over again by the time we raised our first round of financing. So it almost became I could not come back rather than I did not want to come back. I really wanted to come back over and over again. And hence I kept in touch with various students back here and, and try to help in whatever ways I can. During this period, after I came to, uh, while I was still uh, graduating and was still in school, I, I went through a very, very bad patch of time. I started Oravel, and as with any entrepreneur, while I was building this, all, half of the people said I had gone bonkers. There were little or no one who was ready to fund this venture of mine. Around the same period of time, my family was back there in Orissa, and I could not call them uh, when I was going through this patch, bad patch. And this bad patch meant I was broke. I had little or no money to live with. My friends were all college students, so their pocket money was no more than what I had. And the only option left was either go back to school or call back your family. And if you call back your family, they're going to call you back. So I slept on stairs for 12 days before I found help who could actually get me to work with him. And today he's a millionaire working with me and, and runs supply for us. I think in that period, one of the big things that I learned was a lot of times you'd see failure right in front of you saying, you know what, you can give up. And it is very easy to give up during that period of time. But today when I look back, I don't feel unhappy or you know, sad about those moments. I feel that was a box of cherries. Because that was a time when today, across the world, businesses, there's one thing that I deeply think is right for any business globally. The biggest risk is not taking a risk. And that is the moment which inspired me to actually take risks, not only then, but today. Because I have nothing to lose. Because I still remember that I've gone through some of the most down points in my life. And after going there, you almost, you, almost, you almost don't have anything to lose in terms of luxuries, lifestyle, et cetera, et cetera, because you've just seen the worst. And, and anything from there is actually going to get better. So that's the other one, that whenever you have failures, if you're committed to really creating something, really, you know, I mean, that's when you have to remain perseverant and go out and go for it. I think the other thing which I learned, which was, which was brilliant, is over after I started the company, there are little or no businesses in India which have been built by people as young as me to the size which is a billion dollar plus in terms of value of what we've been able to create. One of the reasons why I was able to create, I would be kidding myself if I said I'd build this myself over the last couple of years. It was because of the brilliant team that we built around myself. That remains true actually in everyone's life. There's a very interesting commandment that we have as Oyo's culture. It's called play for letting the team win. And there's a photo of a goalkeeper. You know why? How many of you have seen a soccer match where the goalkeeper, 10 minutes before the match ends, actually runs down the middle of the field to go and score the goal on the other side? Many a times. He could have very easily said, hey, I'm the goalkeeper, and I'm here to make my goal saved. But he didn't do that. He said, I'm here to let my team win, and whatever is required to let my team win, I'm going to do that. This applies to every form of life. You're going to have student events here. You're going to have placement committee organizations where you're, you're going to have yourself and your team. You're going to be in companies in the future. Many of you will run companies in the future. In any of those situations, be a team player. It is very, leaders are always the best team players, and that is the reason they, became, they, they become leaders, because everyone respects them, not because they ask for respect, but because they earn it. So that's one more thing that I learned in a massive way uh, in, my, in my past couple of years. The other thing that I learned was don't, think, don't build things for glamour, but build things for really solving a problem. When I was pivoting from Oravel into Oyo, just to give background, uh, pivoting is, you know, there's one kind of business which failed, and then you try and so build something else which probably works. This is true for a lot of businesses globally. A lot of you all know Facebook actually started as something that was help connected, was there to connect DOMs. Snapdeal started as something that was a coupon website. And that is, that is very similar to us. We started as something that was just a booking website. And we realized that there was no impact that we were creating. I mean, that was a decent business to be in. But for me, being able to drop out at that age and taking this tough decision was not to build one more business. If I were to create something, it had to be innovative. It had to be something that changed people's lives. And today, 
we are very happy when we see some large impacts being created. And I'll give you some very interesting examples. More people sleep at OA properties in Gurgaon than the number of people stay in a street on Sona Road. More people uh, stay with OYO in OYO when electricity goes away than the number of people who stay at their own houses in a bunch of streets across the country. So not only are we able to change the way where, by means of which people stay at hotels, but actually stay away from home. It, imagine of it like a few years back about taxis. Did you take a taxi for every reason a few years back? No, you did not. But today with the economy, economical side of it, with the ease of it, you almost use it for everything, to drop your parents, to come back to school, and so on and so forth. That's the same thing that we're able to create. And this is something that was because I almost through my life, I did not want to be one of many. I wanted to be someone who was different. And uh, that was how I was. All of you will be different in that respect. It's important to make sure a lot of people around yourself would say, being this is not en masse. And if you're not in Massey, you might not be successful. But reality is if you're not, you actually have more chances of being successful. So go on and try doing that over and over again. I want to keep it discreetly short. So there was, there'll be a couple of last few things that I'd like to talk about. One of the other things that I learned, a lot of entrepreneurs in India have built businesses, but probably only six to eight of them have raised uh, more than 100 mil of, of what we've raised. I think a lot of people glamorize raising capital. I think when I saw our first capital raise was a million dollars, and now it's a hundred million. The first time I saw this thing on a bank account, I felt very happy. I'd never seen this much money in a single bank account. I felt very happy for a moment. And then I got scared because these are people who are among the world's most savviest investors, and they're trusting and betting on someone who is as young to potentially return in 20s of multiples of what they have invested. And it feels scary that you have been lied upon with so much trust and reliability to be able to go out and create value, not only for yourself, but for so many guests and support partners out there. But I think that's the power of what we're trying to build. And that's the power of the new age millennial Indian who doesn't, who doesn't come with the burden of saying, this is how things are going to be done, who comes with a view of saying, we're going to go out and create a real change out there by solving the problem that we ourselves faced for a long time. And the last one is all of you guys are going to have a great year back here. I work with some of the people from ISPF very closely. And I've always seen that there's something that this university always aspires for. It demands excellence. And it is crazy. But I think the reason why demanding excellence among all of you, it's going to push you towards the last limit. And I'm not kidding you. I will, I will not be nice as uh, Mr. Chadda was to say it will be a great year. It's, 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 this, this year is going to be challenging. It's, you're going to be demanded excellence for. But reality is, that is actually really good. If you were in a place which was extremely soft and nice to you, you would not realize what you're really capable of. I realized what I was capable of when I was pushed to a real corner the world started saying me, you have done something completely wrong, and this is going to go nowhere. I think that is where I said, everything that I can do, I'm going to invest in this to be able to make it real. I think that's what everyone is going to go through. This is almost like this bird, which is the corner of a sea, and is, and is led to fly on the sea. And then, and then it really depends on how much energy you have to be able to fly across the ocean. And you don't realize it until you really see a large ocean around yourself. So, Push yourselves to the last limits because you have nothing to lose. This one year is going to be nothing short of a treat. You're going to make friends who will probably become your colleagues, your friends, future uh, partners, and so on and so forth. So build great social relationships, and this is going to help you through your life. Thank you so much for hearing me.